Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian from Whisper Status 74 and this video is on 12-bit panels and HDMI 2.1 and should you wait. This is a video of a Sony 900E in the background and honestly copyright is getting to be a little out of control in regards to shooting anything else but some of these random demos so I apologize for not having something else in the background. Um, I was watching a video on HDTV Test, which is Vincent, if you do not know who he is or have not followed his channel, he's an excellent channel, and he was talking about the possibility of HDMI 2.1 becoming commonplace soon, and should you wait. I'll link that video in the descriptions, I think it's very analytical, it's not super long, but I think it's got great information, and he has some evidence to back up his claim where he thinks that they might not be available till late 2019, maybe 2020, 2021. Now why is that important to many of you? Is a lot of us, including myself, are really waiting for HDMI 2.1. For me, I'm more waiting for HDMI 2.1 and 12-bit color is what I'm really looking for, which will be the next step up from the 10-bit color that we have. Um, so a lot of you don't know, should you purchase a display now? A lot of you are looking at um, OLEDs, you're looking at flagship displays, Samsung Q9FN, Z9F, uh, displays of that nature, and you're wondering what's the next step and what should you purchase? Now it was definitely in my opinion to wait for 12-bit before purchasing another 4K display for myself. I've had several flagships and have found the sweet spot in my own personal um, experience with the 75 inch Sony 900E and I'm extremely happy with it and I've had the opportunity to purchase a display this year and just really didn't find anything that I loved um, in regards to being such a huge step up for me however many of you are considering more along the lines of purchasing your first 4K TV and I hear micro LED a lot I hear 12-bit panels and I hear things of that nature most of the time and what should you do well I think Vincent's video does point out a lot of very interesting facts about how long it may take and also how each uh, link in the chain of all of your equipment must also be HDMI 2.1 be it your receiver your consoles things of that nature so it's not going to be quite as easy as 12-bit panels are here let's rock um, and you're all set what concerns me, though, is the marketing behind 12-bit panels, and I can already promise you the marketing for this is going to resemble years ago when 720p was HD, and then briefly there was 1080i. Then 1080p was then um, reintroduced or introduced as being real HD or true HD. I can already tell you the marketing behind 12-bit panels will definitely be real Dolby Vision or real HDR, or HDR, whatever. And we already have a lot of that going on in regards to how many nits your display is. Are you seeing real HDR? We saw a lot of that in the Red Dead videos about people accusing other people, your display's not a thousand nits. So this can get very out of control very quickly. Now can you imagine purchasing a brand new flagship display? We'll use the Samsung Q9FN or the Sony Z9F, and you've just spent a ridiculous amount of money on this very bright, very beautiful display, and then a year later you hear, oh, that's not real HDR. Um, you need a 12-bit panel for that, um, because 12-bit panels are what Dolby Vision is based on, and you won't be able to fully realize it. It's very tricky with all things that we pick up, all tech that we pick up, you're always going to have that next thing that is better. Uh, for example, with graphics cards, I have a GTX 1080 Ti. I don't really care for having the 2080 Ti. However, it has ray tracing. The GTX family will not have ray tracing. So that buzzword and that marketing might hang on me a little bit. The question is, will ray tracing make a big difference? When will it be implemented? Same with 12-bit panels. A lot of you have 8-bit panels and don't notice the difference between 10-bit panels. And I've messed with the color space plenty of times on my NVIDIA panel or NVIDIA control panel and haven't seen a huge difference between 10-bit and 8-bit. Um, so the question and what I love about his video, and please check out the video in the description, is he's very analytical. He's very detailed. He is a professional calibrator. Um, he's been accused of being partial towards certain brands. I don't see that or 
you know, consider that he's just very analytical. Um, very funny guy, very dry, so you have to um, pay attention when he's kind of throwing a joke out there. But he makes some excellent points, and I'd love for you guys to check out that video because I think it puts into um, the proper framework of how long it may be. So my advice to you guys, and I'll follow my own advice, is I won't be purchasing a new 4K display as I already have one. Um, I already have a 75-inch Sony 900U that I'm very, very happy with. But the question is for you guys that are first-time buyers. I don't know if it's worth waiting another two or three years when there's so much good 4K content now, especially in the gaming space with the Xbox One X, the PS4 Pro, and the PC market the way it is now after the crypto mining thing has faded. There is so much good quality content out there. Where the generation before, when I first purchased my first 4K Samsung, HDR had not been introduced, um, so I was basically didn't have any 4K content. There were no 4K Blu-rays. There were really no 4K games other than a PC at the time, which um, they weren't powerful enough at that time. So that was due to a lack of content. Now there's content everywhere. 4K discs are being released every week. There's 4K content on Amazon, Netflix... Hulu, you can name it. So the content is there. And I don't think there's the danger of purchasing a display this year and then next year being hit with that. It'll happen at some point, but I think for the time being, you're safe. Micro LED is fascinating, and I would love to see it, but as of right now, it feels a bit like a pipe dream as I haven't seen anything on it. 8K displays, I would not purchase an 8K display. There is no 8K content, and up conversion is a nightmare for 720p content on a 4K stream um, screen, as I saw the other day while I was looking at my friend's OLED, it didn't look great with cable TV source. So in terms of 4K content, there's plenty of it out there. I would purchase a 4K display if you do not have one yet. However, if you do have a 4K display and you're not super wealthy, I wouldn't think upgrading to an incremental upgrade would be better. Do I think the Samsung Q9FN is better than the Sony 900E? I do. I do believe it's a better display. It's brighter. Is it double the price brighter or worth me upgrading and going through the panel lottery brighter? To me, no. Even the OLED, as beautiful as it was, I didn't come back to my 900E and think it looked terrible. So I'm very content, primarily because the amount of content that I have. So look at Vincent's video. Please tell me in the comments what you think. I will link it below. But he makes some excellent points. Check out his channel. Subscribe to his channel. He has excellent information. Uh, my only probably criticism of the channel is it is very analytical. And when he reviews displays, it's not so detailed in terms of gamer-centric. Um, or anything with like motion. Some things he hasn't talked much about with his displays. Also, those of you that have Q9FNs and have Samsungs... He seems to be a very uh, stickler to color accuracy. And though the Samsungs have wider color gamuts, I think the Samsungs get kind of a bad rap, or he may grade those lower, because though it has a wider color gamut, it isn't quite as accurate to his equipment, perhaps, than what you and I may see with our own eye. So... Also, as far as an HDMI 2.1 cable, I do have one connect a Belkin one connected to my PC. Some people on YouTube swear that it looks better, it's cleaner, it's faster. I haven't noticed any discernible difference, so don't get caught up in the cable. At least in my opinion, the cable craze. You don't need to do that right now. Um, but again, to wrap up the video, my recommendation is if you have an existing 4K display that you're pretty happy with, um, you didn't buy a first generation. As long as it has HDR and you can enjoy the content and it's pretty good, I would stay with it and wait a few years. Unless you're moving up in size, that is. If you're moving up in size, that's a different matter altogether. But if you're waiting for HDMI 2.1 based on his video and some other information, I would purchase your display if you're holding back. If you have a 1080p display right now, you are missing quite a bit in terms of 4K content, especially in the gaming space. So check out his video. Thank you as always, guys, and I will talk to you soon. I look forward to hearing your comments. Take care.